is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board of the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. Every Wednesday, I talk to a different expert about the tools you need to get the work you want. Find Your Dream Job is brought to you by Top Resume. Top Resume has helped more than 400,000 professionals land more interviews and get hired faster. Get a free review of your resume today. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. When you're out of work, you might think about going to graduate school. Our guest today says you don't want to put your career on hold if you do enroll in a graduate program. Instead, you need to think about your job search throughout your graduate education. Liz Herrera is here to talk about nine ways to jumpstart your career while in graduate school. Liz is a professional career coach. She's also a director of career development and major exploration at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Liz joins us from Chicago, Illinois. Well, let's get started. Liz, uh, you've got nine tips for graduate school students um, and how they can make a difference in their career. But before we go through your list, why do you recommend students think about job hunting at all throughout graduate school? Yes, absolutely. I think that a lot of times students wait until the last minute uh, ready when they're ready to graduate to start the job hunt. And as you know, the job search process does take some time and there's a lot of organization and you need to be very thoughtful about that process. So starting early is extremely important to really get ahead and be competitive once you are ready to enter the job market. But Liz, shouldn't students focus on studies, not careers before graduation? That's a great question. I think that definitely focusing on academics is very important, but you really want to distinguish yourself from your competition, right? So while you are training and developing and receiving an education, when you graduate, you want to also show employers that you not only have the academic training, but that you have the skill set and experience because that is really going to speak volume. So trying to find ways to acquire skill set outside of the classroom uh, is extremely important. You've worked in career services centers for a number of years now. What do you see happen, Liz, to graduate students who don't think about their careers and job hunting until commencement or even afterwards? Yes, in my experience, uh, frustration uh, or, you know, I I used to work with, with a lot of graduate students and the ones that waited until the last minute, you know, some of them didn't even have a resume and they're pretty much starting from scratch. So, you know, trying to figure out where they want to go, what type of jobs they want to focus on, creating their professional package. Now, I will say that I always told my students, it's okay, we'll work on this. But the students that focused that energy at the beginning had a much easier time executing that job search because they were able to use their grad school time to focus on that. And they felt more prepared when putting themselves out there uh, for the job search. So you're not doomed if you wait until graduation day, but you're going to have a much more productive and easier search if you start much sooner. Is, is that it, Liz? That's correct. Absolutely. Now, uh, we're going to go through your list, but before we do that, we're focusing on graduate schools, and, but does your advice also apply to community college students or anyone in school, Liz? Absolutely. I think that anyone that is any type of education that you're pursuing, whether it's if you're getting an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, a doctoral degree, uh, it, I think all of these will apply for sure. Well, let's go through your list. You've got nine tips here. And the first is to assess and track your skills, strengths, and contributions. Why is this important, Liz? I think a lot of times people forget that they have acquired skills over time. And while they are in graduate school, you know, specifically, that's what we're talking about. You're going to be learning different techniques and tools in the different classes. And it's important to really capture what those things are, even though it's 
academic training, you're building a skill set that will later later on come in handy. Uh, I always encourage students to keep a journal. So whenever they are, you know, maybe after a course, there's something that they learned. Um, Maybe there's some practical experiences. I know a lot of these courses require more of a practical, hands-on, working in teams, working in a project, doing maybe a case study or working in a community those things are essential, and there are a lot of skills that you can acquire th- acquire through those experiences, and it's important to keep track of that because, trust me, you will forget. Uh, so it's it's a it's a good habit to form to to keep track of of the new skills. That surprises me. Do you find that s- students who don't do this kind of self assessment just don't have as good a grasp uh, of their strengths as as those who do? In my experience, yes, I would say that I've worked with individuals who, you know, we're having a conversation and as we're preparing for, let's say, a job interview or updating their resume, we have to really dig deep and think about, okay, what did you learn when you were in this class? Or even speaking the language, uh, the terminology of their industry. And I had students that did have to do a journal, let's say, for a class. And those students were better equipped to articulate and communicate some of those skills because they had already uh, written it down somewhere. Uh, they've archived it. They've captured it in some way. And, and it just triggered their memory like, oh, that's right. I, I took that class. I did that. I, ha- I do have that skill. And I think a lot of times students undermine or undervalue uh, a certain skill or a, you know, a new ability because they don't think of it. It's kind of like, oh, it's in the back of my mind. I took that class and I'm ready for the next class and, and don't really identify as, you know, these are, they're being equipped with something that they're going to be essentially implementing in their field. What should a student do with this information? Consistently update their resume. You know, I, I think a lot of people wait again until the last minute to update and, and they forget this information. So I want to say that majority of universities or colleges have some type of career services office. And I would say, you know, visit that office early on. We love when students take advantage of the services that are available to them. And so even after the first semester, meeting with with an advisor, I know I would always tell my students, come see me, you know, right away. And those students that worked with me early on, we were able to talk about their classroom experiences, maybe their volunteer experience, anything that they were getting involved with and really trying to capture what they've experienced and putting that, putting it on paper. So I always recommend people creating a master resume. And I always tell my students, this is for your eyes only, right? So it could be multiple pages in length. Uh, This is something just for you to track and document the different types of skills or, you know, courses, experiences that you are, you know, acquiring throughout your program, because you most likely will need to refer back to that as you start packaging yourself for different opportunities. Number two on your list of nine career tips for graduate students is to optimize LinkedIn. How do you recommend, Liz, that a graduate student optimize a LinkedIn account? Yes, LinkedIn is very multifaceted and I know a lot of students will, you know, will say, well, I'm not on the job hunt yet. I just started school. Why should I even be on LinkedIn? I think definitely establishing an online presence, uh, making sure that, you know, you have a personal brand, that you have a digital footprint. So this is essentially your marketing tool. And a lot of times students feel that they don't have a lot of experience to include just yet, but I don't believe that. After a conversation, I find that students do have experiences, even if they're not directly related. Employers do like to see that you've had some type of professional exposure, some type of experience. So adding projects, volunteer work, student involvement, your work history, having a summary of maybe what are your career aspirations that's going to be extremely important. Uh, and also really getting a vantage point of where you want to go, uh, joining professional groups, getting involved and just maybe being a, an observer at the beginning, kind of seeing what's out there, what kind of specific areas or specializations you may want to consider, follow companies. There is no harm in following a company, even if you are not on the job hunt. Again, just to see 
who's out there, what's out there, and gaining that visibility. And then, of course, you can follow influencers, industry leaders, and it's good to stay abreast of current trends, uh, again, in areas that you are thinking about pursuing. So LinkedIn is definitely very versatile. Uh, one area, of course, is the, the self-promotion, the personal brand, but also it's a, a great tool or platform to explore, see what's out there, look at opportunities, and really it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful professional landscape. I'm glad you brought up the value of LinkedIn as a research tool, because I think many students think it of LinkedIn as something that they'll get to a few months before graduation. Um, but it's not just a calling card and, and an, ad, an advertisement for yourself. It's also a way of, of learning along the way. Uh, number three on your list, Liz, is to conduct informational interviews. Why do you recommend graduate students do informational interviews? For so many reasons, it, it's very beneficial. So one, you know, trying to figure out, okay, are you going to be a good fit for an organization? Organizational culture is going to be extremely important. So why not talk to individuals that are already working in organizations that you are considering? So being prepared with some intentional questions to, to learn a little bit about an organization. Um, another reason, too, is connecting with professionals and learning about their career trajectory, you know, they can provide advice on how to tap into that particular field. You know, even maybe if you're studying the same thing, there might be certain specialties that may have a different, you know, entry point, or they may get advice on, you know, what they should be doing while in grad school. That was one of the popular questions when we would invite alumni to talk about their career path. They would always say, oh, I wish that I knew you know, this information while I was in grad school. So really tapping into alumni for informational interviews is key because you can get so much information about, you know, that person's career trajectory, but also insight into that specific field or industry. Your fourth tip on your list of nine for graduate students is to serve as a volunteer. How can volunteering during your graduate education help you with your career? Gaining skills, gaining exposure, but also identifying your interests. Even though you're in grad school, you're still exploring. And if you are looking to work in corporate or the community, in government, regardless of where, what you, what type of area or industry, it's good to volunteer to really get a sense of, you know, what, what do you want to focus on? What do you like? What you don't like? But also gaining skills that you can add to your resume. And when you're interviewing for a position and you're able to talk to an employer that you were in school, but you were also volunteering for a particular cause or something that that aligns to your career goals, that can speak volume. So I think volunteering can really be beneficial in so many ways from building your professional package, but also to learn about yourself uh, and see you know, what you like, what you don't like, and building connections, networking. Terrific. We're going to take a break, Liz. And when we come back, um, I want to talk about the fifth of uh, your fifth tip, which is one of my favorite uh, strategies using university job search databases. So stay with us. When we return, Liz Herrera will continue to share her advice about nine ways you can follow to jumpstart your career while in graduate school. If it's time to update your resume, the professional writers at Top Resume can help. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Top Resume will review your resume for free. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. You'll get practical ideas you can use right away to make your resume better. And you can hire Top Resume to do your resume for you, too. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the MaxList studio. I'm talking with Liz Herrera. She's a professional career coach. Liz is also a director of career development 
and major exploration at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Now, Liz, you were taking us uh, in the first segment through a list of nine ways you recommend graduate students uh, follow to jumpstart a career while they're still in graduate school. And number five on your list, as I mentioned before the break, it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's to use the university job search database. Uh, tell us more about this. Absolutely. I think a lot of times students, especially grad students, they don't take advantage of a lot of the resources available to them. And one great resource for many of the universities that they offer are the job search databases. So these are typically exclusively available to uh, the university students or college student and employers are recruiting and they specifically focus on the career centers because they want recent grads. And I think a lot of times students don't believe that, but it is true. Employers, they want to recruit you know, recent grads, they want to recruit from campuses. So they rely on these job search engines that are specifically for university students. So I'll give you an example. At UIC, we use Handshake and we just acquired this tool and it's fabulous. I love it because students not only get to connect with employers, they also get to connect with other students and employers are doing also a lot of panels and virtual job fairs. So there are a lot of benefits to using the university job search database. And I feel that a lot of students don't tap into that resource. So definitely take advantage of that or ask your, you know, your career center to see what that looks like. And I'm also going to plug in that a lot of times these tools are also available to alumni. So something to consider and to also uh, find out. I'm glad you made that point about employers often advertising just on a particular university's job search or job board because I run a we run a job board at, at Maxlist and that certainly has been our experience that you'll see jobs in university uh, job search databases that you might not see on on many other sites or perhaps only on that site. So while you can't rely on job boards alone, it is, uh, it's a valuable resource. Number six on your list is to, you say, uh, you recommend rather that people build experience with an internship. Why are internships so important, especially for graduate students? Yes, it's, it's definitely an opportunity to work in a more, uh, it's a more commitment focused rather than, you know, vol volunteer work is great and, and I encourage it. But if there's an opportunity to, to, an act, to actually do an internship that allows someone to actually work longer with an employer, really build, again, that skill set, gain experience, get, get hands on experience to what it would be like to maybe work in that organization and I will say that a lot of times when students have internships and they impress an employer, I have seen employers create positions for someone because they have already trained them uh, in the in the work and they really like their they were impressed with their performance or they may, you know, have opportunities for other positions within the organization and they are referred to maybe uh, colleagues within the company because they have experienced working with them. So internships can really be valuable while you are in grad school because that can be a great place to start when you are on the job hunt. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that a lot of graduate programs already have some type of internship or preceptorship component to the program. And I always told my students this because many of my students were required to do an internship don't don't undervalue it and don't think of it as, oh, this is a, just another thing I have to get done and I just need to finish grad school. Maximize that experience. Leverage that network. You know, you have access to these professionals and cultivating that, you know, those relationships, adding them to your LinkedIn network because that can really come in handy when you are ready for your job hunt. So be intentional and strategic about that internship experience, for sure. Do you recommend graduate students consider doing more than one internship? 
Well, yes, the more the better. Uh, I would say, you know, I, I want to be also mindful that, you know, depending on people's situation, right? So some people may be going to grad school and working full time, uh, or they may have, you know, a, a full course load. And so, of course, you want to be realistic in, in your time and, and managing your time. But if you are in a situation where you can do multiple internships, absolutely, that's definitely going to add more value. You have more experiences to include on your resume, to talk about during a job interview, and it expands your network in various areas. Number seven on your list, Liz, is to build meaningful relationships. And you've touched on this a number of times, but what kind of relationships are we talking about and, and with whom? Definitely relationships with everyone. So I think a lot of times people think like, oh, you know, the high, the highest level person you can think of. While they're important, your peers, even your peers, you know, one of my first jobs out of, uh, uh, you know, after grad school was because of a colleague that I went to school with that referred me to a position. So never undervalue those relationships, even people that you went to school with, but also mentors Definitely looking into mentors within your program or in the internship, connecting with faculty. That's going to be extremely important because a lot of faculty, they have connections to people in the industry. And I will tell you that employers a lot of times will contact faculty if they are trying to share a job opportunity. So definitely making connections with faculty. Or if you're you know, getting your master's degree and you're thinking about pursuing a doctoral degree, again, those relationships with your faculty are going to be extremely key, especially if you're doing research. So I would say mentors, faculty, professionals in the field, it's important to cultivate. And that way you don't feel, you know, at the end, like, oh, now I have to connect with everyone and I'm going to, I'm going to feel like disingenuous. That way you keep your, you know, you keep cultivating relationships are important, right? It's human to human. So you want it to be authentic and it takes time to build that trust. So when you start early, uh, it, you just feel like you have more of that bond and that connection. And it's easier to reach out to someone because you've already met with them. You've talked to them and you've established that, that connection. How do you recommend maintaining relationships, not only with faculty, but the others that you meet in graduate school after graduation? You know, there are a lot of different ways, you know, in my experience, people reaching out and saying, hey, you know, let's let's grab a cup of coffee or, you know, let's catch up or even updates. Like for me personally, I love updates. So when a student reaches out and says, Liz, you taught me about, you know, salary negotiation or you taught me about this and I and I use that tool or that strategy and I just love hearing from people that I've talked to and they're not bothering me. They're not bugging me. I love that. So when you connect with your mentors or your colleagues or even faculty uh, or other professionals, just to give them an update, that that is great. Or even connecting with them to find out how they're doing. You know, thought of you today, uh, you know, how how is your day or how is your week? It, it, it can be as simple as that. And then you stay on that person's radar, you're visible. And it's just, a, it's, and again, you want to be authentic and genuine, but I, I think there's a way to still stay connected. And even if it's, you know, six months, that's okay too. You know, we're busy, things happen, but don't be afraid to reach out to, to your connections, even just to check in, um, say hello. I think that can be, that can be a good thing. Number eight on your list of nine tips for graduate students who are thinking about their career is to join professional organizations. And you touched on this uh, in the first segment. Why are you a big fan of graduate students getting involved in professional groups? Absolutely. So the nice thing is professional associations typically cost money, right? And, you know, when you're in your, prof in your field, you are paying all this money to be a member. Now, when you are a student, a lot of times either they're free or you get a discount and you get to connect with so many professionals already practicing in the field. You gain access to, you know, maybe conferences, networking events. So why not want to tap into professionals early on that are practitioners that are already doing things in the field that you can learn from? And this is a great way to maybe identify mentors learn about trends in the field 
and really immersing yourself in in your field of study, in your industry. Uh, so professional associations can be a great way to get your foot in the door and to, again, just absorb as much uh, information as you can. Every student's time is limited. How do you recommend a student choose if uh, they're considering, you know, two or three leading professional groups in their field? No, that's a, that's a great point. I would say, you know, there's a season for everything. And I know I have definitely worked with students who want to do it all. And while that's admirable, I think, you know, it's okay to take it one day at a time. So for instance, if you're interested in one particular area, so I had students that were interested in global health, for instance, and there was a particular group that just focused on that. Maybe you join a, a group in that area, get, you know, get information, get connected. And maybe the following year you join something different. So you will find your niche. You will find where you feel like you fit, but it's exploratory. And if, if it's just joining one, honestly, I think that is enough to begin with. And, uh, it's just, it's, it's a good habit to practice as a professional. And I recommend that to be a lifelong experience no matter how many years of experience you have, even when you're in your profession, to at least be a part of one professional organization uh, as it, it helps you stay, again, on trend and learning new best practices. So I wouldn't get super overwhelmed about making the right choice. Uh, choose what speaks to you at that at that given moment and that aligns to your to your interest um, at, at that time, you can always change and and you know explore others. But one one at a time is is fine for sure. The last item on your list of nine is to customize your professional branding toolkit. Now, what what do you mean by a professional branding toolkit, Liz? And and how is that going to help you find a job after graduate school? Right. So everything needs to be tailored, everything. So when I say professional branding toolkit, I'm referring to the cover letter, the resume, CV, even when you're going into an interview, whenever you're connecting with an employer, they want to know why you want to work for them, why you want to work for that particular organization, why you are in this particular field or industry. So you really have to be able to articulate that and it has to be specific. So, you know, you don't want to be all over the place. And while you have so many interests and you want to go into so many different areas, when you are focused on a job application or a specific position, you really want to carefully think about the relevant experiences that speak to that particular position. So really thinking about how you are presenting your brand to employers and, and also LinkedIn, right? So if you have specific research interests or specific areas that you want to work on, little by little adding that to your profile because you will start to attract employers and companies into your into your LinkedIn profile and they're going to see the things that you're involved in and that you have been thinking about this career path for a while, you know, through the professional organizations, through your student involvement, through your community work, through your volunteerism, through your internships. So you're starting to tell a story. And so everything should always be, you know, very specific and intentional to your targeted audience. I've so enjoyed our conversation. Now, tell us, Liz, what's next for you? Yes. So I have just recently launched uh, a career podcast. So it's Liz Career Coaching Podcast. And I talk about all different types of topics that students usually reach out to me for or clients. So uh, again, just started that and uh, very excited to have people uh, take a listen. Well, congratulations on the launch of your show. I know people can learn more about your podcast and your coaching services by visiting your website. That's lizcareercoaching.net. Now, Liz, given all the great advice you've shared today, what's the one thing you want a listener to remember about your nine ways to jumpstart your career while in graduate school? Don't be afraid to connect with people, build meaningful connections, establish your network, keep the momentum going, and just, you know, the best of luck in graduate school. Make 
make sure you never miss an episode of Find Your Dream Job. Subscribe to our free podcast newsletter. You'll get information about our guests, free job search articles, and transcripts of every show. Go to maxlist.org slash show notes. Again, that's maxlist.org slash show notes. Next week, our guest will be Andy Foote. He's a writer and coach who teaches LinkedIn strategies. Andy also hosts the podcast Footnotes. It's an interview show with interesting people on LinkedIn. One of the most effective ways to get an employer's attention is to post content on LinkedIn. But to do this well, says Andy, you need to study what works, learn from those who do it best, and give yourself time. Andy and I will talk about how you can create LinkedIn content that will help you land your next job. I hope you'll join us. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job.